So Isaiah Yunge is the founder of Soma App. Where are you, Isaiah? Woo! Big round of applause to Mr. Isaiah Yunge. Karibu. So, Isaiah, you're going to give us a brief presentation. Do you need the clicker? You're okay. You're going to speak from... You do need the clicker. Uh, so my name is Isaiah Yunge, uh, as they have introduced me, I would like to extend my thanks to Sarah uh, Sparks team and management for having me here today. Um, it's really an honor for me and my team to be at this uh, event today. Can I have my PowerPoint please? Oh, next. Oh, thank you. Um, so I wanted to walk you through a journey of what we call a revolution that is about to happen in Africa. But before, I would like to introduce you to what really is our heart, what we believe, or why we started walking the direction we are walking today. So I, I am personally, and it happened to some of my team members, we are inspired by the likes of Mansa Musa, the likes of Dangote, the likes of Mandela, the likes of um, Mwalim Nyelele, and I grew up looking up to people like this. And when I came to a person like Mansa Musa, he was one of the richest and wealthiest person in Africa today. I grew up surrounded by poverty. And so, with my team, one of our biggest goals we have is to build solutions that at the one end we want to kick out poverty from our society, from our families, into our own lives. So we call ourselves as makers of tomorrow. We see Africa in the next 300, 100 years to come. What will be the impact that we've created? And so I want to introduce you to our vision as a company. Our company was founded in 2016. June, with a mission to accelerate the advent of mobile software technologies, artificial intelligence, and the Internet of Things. We see a great potential for African young people, companies, and business to build immense solutions towards African problems using these technologies, AI being one of the key technologies for us to use to power African families, people, with beautiful, simple, smart solutions. These are the makers of tomorrow that I work with. I thought I cannot start my presentation without showing you my team. We are a team of 10 people. Uh, three of our members, are uh, they work from Limut Elias. Uh, we, uh, we have people working on R&D in China, and we have uh, uh, a team of seven people here in Tanzania at the office. Um, we are all university graduates, and so we saw a lot of challenges coming to young people, happen to young people, and that which are about to happen because of one bigger factor, a smartphone, a mobile phone. Of course, it's a device, it's a tool that helps Africans, it helps people, it empowers a lot of the things we are doing. Um, we thrive better in four pillars of what we call our values, and these are innovation. We want to innovate every day. What could be better in different solutions? We have passion for solutions. We're looking for an area whereby we can build something for our people, for our market, and be able to empower people and impact people's lives. We want to build trust with our users. And that's why this, this presentation is important for me because I want to establish an honest base whereby trust is built between technology and the users of technology. The theme is the innovation at the age of data. 
data, how can trust be established there? So our company value and morals thrive from trust and honest. But we are brave because we want to challenge the status quo. And that's why our brevity led us and gave us the agility to ask this question, the same question uh, the winners of the challenge have, have been asked for. How do we improve the well-being of young people using AI? This is the question we want to tackle by using brevity, passion, innovation, and a solution-centric approach to what we do. By using AI, where can we put brave in what we have today and change that which we have to a simple, smart solution that powers and supports the African society to rise up. We are saying, we think today by 2025, the population of Africa will exceed that of India and China. But today, from 2015 to 2050, the population in Africa is up around 1.2 billion. And it's gonna be, it's gonna increase to 2.2 billion by 2050. This population, if you look for the 1% of the population, these are young people at the age of 15 years old. These young people, according to GSM report, in sub-Saharan Africa, at least every household in, in Africa, there's one person with a smartphone and a mobile money account. 19% of this population today, they are the age of 15 to 24 years old. In East Africa, this is where we mirror this generation. This is where we have the largest population of young people in East Africa, whereby 150 of the East African population comprises of 45% young people at the age of 15 years old, with 20-80% being young people at the age of 15 to 28 years old, 24 years old. These young people, me and my team, we're in the same category. And we asked, what is our problem? What do we want to see our country? What do we want to see Africa in the next 20, 50, 100 years to come? What do you want to be using? What do you want to, what do you want to be part of? We found out that technology comes with a lot of good things. But with good of technology, there are bad side of technology. This population is facing suicide. In Tanzania alone, 3,500 young people every year commit suicide. What is the cause of that? Hypertension in Tanzania kills every year a number of 5,200 young people in Tanzania every year. There's a mental issue that young people today are facing. And how do we use technology? How do you use AI to address these issues? At mental, mental issues in our culture, if somebody shows symptoms or signs of kind of uh, uh, this kind of um, disease or challenges in their health, they'll be taken to church to be played for or to a witch doctor. They've been bewitched. But these are real issues. And we are looking, how can we be at the center, at the core of innovation, building solutions that address to solve these issues? The larger population of African societies is facing death. Around one million people every year in Africa die because of blood pressure and irregular heart rates. Because we go to hospital until when we are severely sick. We don't have a culture to go to hospital every month, every week, or after every three weeks month is to check to see how our health is doing. So today I want to introduce you to what we've been working on for the last one year and a half to build a technology with an idea that we want to prevent death before it happens. That is our bigger mission with our technology. We want to prevent death before it happens. I want to introduce you to SomaFit. SomaFit is a smart bracelet that is built with the idea of being a technology that stops death because of blood pressure, irregular heart rate, before it happens. We are building an AI technology by using different 
a logarithm or uh, uh, formulas in partnership with um, extremity technology our partners in the US whereby we're trying to test technologies how can someone who is wearing a smartwatch be able to receive notification on their health irregularities we want to alert people that in the next two hours this person will experience a heart attack some of it being a tracker in your hand track your movement daily basis weekly basis and it generates what we call a basis foundation of your health. So, at the one hand, you'll have a database of one's basic health regular performance. And we know this is the regular performance of this person. When this person behavior or experience changes in their health, this device by using AI with what we've already found, uh, uh, found to be true of the normal level of basis of someone's health, we will predict that this person has heart rate is acting at a way that is abnormal, it's irregular. And then some of it will send a notification, one, to your hospital, to your personal doctor, and it will notify you that you need a medical attention. But before I go deep into that, I want to introduce you what we did. Some of it, most of people have come to us, did you buy this product in China? We didn't buy this, this thing in China. We went to, we, we did a design in Tanzania, development of the app in Tanzania. We had to work with a company in Shenzhen on the hardware part, in the manufacturing part. But everything is designed and, uh, and made in Tanzania. So we have a very limited 10 millimeter length from the screen of the smartwatch to the wristband with the weights of 230 meter length of the, length of the smart, uh, smart bracelet. The idea of that number is because you want to help people to understand and track that. At the same time, um, that's how you can charge the smartwatch. It's very easy. Uh, you can charge by putting on your power bank, smart uh, laptop, our features, our basic features, calories, heart rate, blood pressure, and steps. But care, care is our feature whereby we want to support people with mental health issues. We use care to prevent death because care is in a feature that will monitor someone's health and notify and call for ambulance before something happens to them. So the device will be intelligent enough to call for an ambulance before something happens. In case somebody collapses, this device will send a call for an ambulance to a hospital and will send a GPS location of where you are for where the ambulance should come and pick you up. We've combined AI. On the top of AI, we want to send an alert to hospitals. We're looking to partner with hospitals. We are already testing some of these features whereby we will send and alert to hospital and to a personal doctor. And these people, they will come to a rescue. In the case of suicide, we want to monitor the irregular behavior of someone who is about to experience suicide. And then this product, by using care, it will send a notification to the people close to your farm, the ones who choose to listen the app, that these are the people that, in case of irregularities, they should be notified. The app will send notification that this person is experiencing irregular behavior, and they might check out on you and see what's happening. And in that case, you'll be able to save the lives of young people who are about to uh, exercise suicide. So we are using a very small formula we are calling physical activity on prescription. We want to use people with mental health and suicidal behavior. The app will give them, by using the number of doctors we work with, the app will give them a list of prescription on what activities they should do to prevent or to change the mental issues they have to become stable. And these people, they will be listed and qualified as mental advisors within the app. In that way, we are building a sustainable society of young people, of digital natives that are safe by using these smartphones, using these digital wearables to protect their health. And we believe in the sustainable development goals and we are powering Goal number three, to be able to build a society of young people who are health and protected using these technologies 
And that's, that's the whole picture of why Soma Fit is the future of Africa. I know you, you might be wondering, what about Fitbit, what about, what about Apple? I'm going to talk about that. We are building technology for African society. We understand our problems, our challenges, and we are using our people to develop the best solution that we can relate with. Please join us to be part of this movement by visiting our booth outside, find out, find out about how much you can buy our, our technology, how you can use our technology, and how you can be part of this uh, community of digital natives that we want to create in Tanzania and in Africa in particular. Thank you very much. Now that wasn't enough. A big round of applause to Mr. Isaiah Yunge, the man from Soma App, by the way. Just in case you didn't know, he was also honored by the Queen.